Hello and welcome to Fitzest. Now while driving you might have encountered 5 gears or 6 speed or even no gears in case of automatic. But when it comes to bicycle gears, the numbers range in 11, 22, 16, 18 or even 33. Does it all seem rocket science to you? Well it's not. In today's video I will be taking you through bicycle gears. Now before we jump into the technicalities. If you do like my content, do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel and you can always ring the bell to get notifications regarding updates on my video hub that is Fitzest. So let's roll. Alright, this week instead of staying in one place that is in my balcony and working out, I thought why not do some dynamic videos by riding outside. Bicycle gears are made of one, two or three chain rings at the front and anywhere between 6 to 11 or even sometimes 12 cogs at the rear. So taking my road bike that is Scott Speedster 40 for our example today. So I have two chain rings at the front and eight cogs at the back. So in total I get 16 speed or 16 gears. So that is 2 at the front and 8 at the rear. So 8 multiplied by 2 that comes to 16. But you don't have to worry about the numbers. It's quite simple to handle these gears. So your front gears that is the chain rings that is present at the front is something like your high range and low range in your four wheel drive vehicles. You don't use it that often unless there is a, a drastic change in the terrain. The rear gears are switching between the cogs at the rear is what you will be doing often. So accordingly your bike or bicycle will be having two shifters. Uh, usually the shifters will be either integrated or at least near your brake levers. So the right side shifter or lever, it changes your gear at the rear and the left side shifter changes your gear at the front. Now it is the same for both road bikes or uh, even mountain bikes. Well, some vintage bikes may be having shifters at the end of your handlebar or on your aero bars in case of time trial bicycles. But leaving that aside, all other standard bicycle will be having two shifters on your right and left respectively near the brake lever. So next let us see how do we interpret these gears and how can we use it to ride bicycle efficiently. Well now the good road ends here so I'll be taking a u-turn and then I'll continue explaining the things. Okay, so like I said, at the front you have one, two or three chain rings. The smaller the ring that your chain is in at the front, the easier it becomes to pedal. Whereas it's quite the opposite at the rear, that is smaller the cog in which your chain is, the harder it is to pedal. So when you encounter flats or descents, you shift to a harder gear and when you encounter climbs, you shift to easier gear. So that is the philosophy of using gears. 
Now your shifter will be having two levers, both. Unless it is a single chain ring at the front, you will be having two levers at your brake levers or your gear shifters. The larger river or the yeah, the larger lever will shift your chain from smaller ring or cog to the larger ring or cog. And the smaller lever in either of your shifters shift the chain from larger ring or cog to the smaller ring or cog. Okay, so in case of your road bikes, most of the time your brake lever itself is the larger lever and there will be a small something like a paddle shift that acts as the smaller lever and in some shifters like say micro shift or some You know the starting range of Shimano's you will be having the smaller lever somewhere near your thumb so that said you need to shift your gears while pedaling you cannot do so when the bicycle is stand still or when you are freewheeling so let me continue after I finish climbing this Well, that was the theory of changing gears. Now, let me give you some pointers. You must avoid changing gears while the chain is under high load. That is, when you are pressing down really hard with your legs. Now, if you have to change gear, then put in some extra heavy strokes ease off your legs a bit and then shift and the other pointer that I would like to give is avoid cross chaining that is when the chain is at the smaller ring at the front avoid putting the chain in the smallest cog at the rear as well so that will make the chain cross which puts enormous stress on the chain and the reverse also holds good that is never put your chain in the largest ring at the front and largest ring at the rear as well and the last thing i want to tell is always anticipate the gear you don't want to remain in a high gear and get bogged down in the middle of a climb having to shift gear under load or uh, having to stop and then shift so instead it is better to anticipate the required gear right before the climb and pedal yourself up the climb now in the beginning it may all seem a bit complicated but once you have got a few rides under your belt it will become second nature to you so you'll be changing gears without even thinking about it so that's it for today 
hope to see you in many more rides that I'll be doing in future. Until then, ciao.